uh, item 10 on the agenda, which is the roading and transport investment case. Um, and again, um, if we could have questions that are focused on the uh, on the case, on the on the um, paper, not on the wider issues. Uh, Yani. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm just. I've been trying to understand the PT component of this, and um, on, on page 100, it says that a separate business case is being progressed by the Christchurch, Greater Christchurch Partnership to determine the public transit routes that should be prioritised for improvements as part of the recommended program. So basically, um, the money in here for PT is not going to come back to us. It's basically that Greater Christchurch Partnership will determine the priorities around PT and I understand it's only around bus priority. Is that correct? No. So, a um, couple of things. We, we um, oh, firstly, Richard Osborne, for those of you who don't know me, and to my right, Lynette Ellis, Manager of Planning and Delivery. Um, in terms of the business case, um, there, there's been a, a strategic case called PT Futures, which has uh, been approved by uh, the New Zealand Transport Agency Board, and, and what that did was release funding and approval for three separate business cases. Um, one is called Public Transport Foundations, and that's really looking at the five core routes and what we can do on those to improve the level of service and hence lift the patronage. The second one, and these two are very similar, is called um, the Rest of Network. And that's really looking at um, three or four other routes that might be lifted up to a similar level of frequency that you get, say, on the Blue Line or the Orbiter or something like that. So perhaps bringing those up to a level of service which is similar that we have on the five core routes. The third one is called Mass Rapid Transit. And that really looks at um, two key routes, both to the north and to the south, and um, the future of what Mass Rapid Transit might look like in Christchurch. And that's quite a complicated business case and it's quite expensive and it, and it um, uh, involves a lot of thinking and work around um, the uplift of the adjacent land uses and that, that's where these types of things stack up because it's potentially a very big investment. And when you look at something like the, the city rail link up in Auckland, which is you know, circa four or five billion dollars, um, the value uplift from the land adjacent to that has been more than the value of that project. So unless you capture that some way or another, um, you really lose out on the benefits of it. So we've got those three business cases. We've put out a, a request for a proposal, which is out in the market at the moment. And it will actually report back. So I'm sitting on a program steering group um, with other partnership representatives, but it will report back to the PT committee at this stage. It's, got, it's gone through the PT committee, but it's with all the Greater Christchurch Partnership representatives. So the business case will, um, for the first stages of those two that I um, referred to, will we'll come up with some recommendations by the middle of next year. And um, the key thing that came out of PT Futures was really that people were concerned about both the length of time it takes to get from A to B on public transport, i.e. it's not com um, competitive with the private car or even in some instances with cycling, um, but also the travel time reliability is poor. So one day it might take you 20 minutes and the next day it takes you 40 minutes. And that's not great if you're going to work or coming home because you don't have that reliability. So what the PT Futures business case recommended is that it's important to upgrade the infrastructure on some of those key routes to ensure that you, one, improve the travel time, but also improve the travel time reliability. So that's what we're going to be investigating as part of those business cases that I referred to earlier on. Um, and that will be hopefully determined by the middle of next year for the foundations and the rest of network. The mass rapid transit will take longer because that's more complicated and it's important to get right. Sorry, you don't want to... Richard, Richard you've just, just reminded me that I did the wrong thing. So, um, and, but that was such a fantastic summary of the situation <laughs> could have been that we then. were in. No, 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 that was brilliant. Um, but that isn't relevant to today's paper. Right. So um, I'm not going to take any further questions on it. You have given a really good background and an explanation as to why it's not relevant for today. Um, but it is relevant to uh, a better public understanding of the 
um, situation that we're in in relation to where we sit in terms of um, the range of issues around urban development and transport, which right. when we get to the committee structure, so, we will understand why we've connected the two of those. Okay. So just so, um, so that's that. I'm now going to I'm sorry, I'm now gonna ask you, Richard, to present the paper because that's what I've overlooked doing. Yep. Um, is to ask you to provide an overview of the paper and if people listen carefully it may in fact answer some of the questions that people might have had burning in their minds and then we can move on to the debate. So thank you Richard. Thank you for that um, and apologies for my slightly long-winded answer. No, no, no it was on. great. Um, so so the, <laughs> the Canterbury earthquake sequence obviously caused significant damage to the, <laughs> to the transport network and um, through the LTP process, we're, look, we're really looking at a, a 20 to 30 year time frame to get back to not even a uh, pre-quake level of service, because the pre-quake level of service for the transport asset was, was pretty high in Christchurch, but to something comparable with other um, urban authorities throughout the country. So um, the resident surveys that we do on a pretty regular basis um, with our citizens have highlighted the fact that, that, that they are unhappy with the state of the, the transport network and that comes through to us loud and clear. We've got a lot of what we call level five or grade five roads, which those are in incredibly poor condition. And um, so what we're looking to do through the intervention of this business case, and, and as Brendan's alluded to, this is at a pretty high level, and we still need to get into the concept designs and consultation and, and other things, so things will change, um, is look at five key areas across the city um, and intervene and, and upgrade the network to both improve safety, um, improve um, travel time, improve the um, quality of the network through resurfacing and renewals. Um, we've outlined the locations that we're looking at, and those are New Brighton, Rickerton, Richmond, Linwood and Sprayton. And um, the evidence base and the work that we've done shows that they are the, the five areas that are um, needing these the most. Um, the second tranche of funding we're looking to put into transport safety, and that's really to reduce the number of deaths and serious injuries across the network. Uh, Christchurch has a real issue, particularly at intersections, uh, where we score badly in terms of the percentage of crashes that we have, and that's one of the things that we'd be looking to tackle through this, but also through in and around schools, speed zones, um, that sort of thing. Um, to make sure that we have a, uh, a safer network than we currently have at the moment. And the third one, as I alluded to, um, is around the um, public transport. And, and the money would come to us for public transport, and ultimately it would be up to this council to decide where to spend it. Um, but we would hope and we would recommend to you that you would be guided in your spending by the outcome of a business case process. And not only is that what the evidence is going to show you, that that's the best thing to spend your money on, if indeed you do want to attract subsidy from the New Zealand Transport Agency, um, that will be fundamental to attracting that subsidy is that you follow that better business case process and um, we might have a chance of, of certainly getting a, a fair chunk of money back from them as well for some of that 40 million. So that 40 million might go a lot, lot further than just that, um, but at the moment um, the agency is in a, a, a kind of a challenging funding situation where um, some of the activity classes are, uh, don't have a lot of money to spend. So that's simply something we'd need to work closely with them on. But thank you very much. And I'm just, um, I was, I, when I was reflecting on the um, recommendations uh, when I was going through the papers, uh, you know, I, I have kind of made it a, a thing about wanting the, 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 the re recommendations to speak for themselves. Uh, and so I've, I've just asked for the, um, the, the ones under 4.8 to be a noting recommendation that are lifted up into the recommendations so that we'll note that the, that the investment case recommends that uh, the roading and transport improvements include the 20 to 30 million to deliver integrated sa safety, modal choice, et cetera, et cetera, and then names the suburban areas that are, are chosen. Um, and then the um, five to seven million on um, targeted safety improvements, and then the five to eight towards the implementation of bus priority measures. So I've got Yanni and then Sam. So I've just sent you an, an amendment. No, um, we don't. Um, oh. Well, it's just it's actually about what you've just raised, which is in the paper on 4.8, we've got 
the reference to the quantums, but what we didn't have was any recommendation. We just had a generic reference to the uh, submission so on the investments case, which you're raising. So I just wanted to amend the one on the PT, um, and I've just sent you all a copy of that amendment. No, but we're so, not dealing with emails during the course of well, the meeting, so can you speak to it? Sure. So it seems to me what we've heard is there's a whole bunch of work happening in PT, um, and although some initial work has shown that bus priority is something that needs to be addressed, there, there are other things that are also being considered. So I can't see why we wouldn't actually just extend that in 4.83 of the paper to extend it to um, uh, public transport initiatives, not just uh, subject to bus priority. Yanni, this is a business case that is going to um, the Treasury. And um, I think I will allow the so, amendment to be written up and then you can debate it and we can vote for it or vote it down. But I'm not going to hold up the meeting uh, with a, um, a, a long um, discussion, not a long um, discussion. Um, around, around these, these things. So, yeah. um, so all it was was simply changing the wording in 4.83 to... Um, you can't change the wording of 4.83. It is not I a know, recommendation. But you've just added the new recommendation. Yes, I'm putting it in as a noting great. recommendation. Thanks. And this is a draft business case that we're signing off. Yeah. Cool. And so, just the other but question you cannot I send an either or to Treasury. I'm sorry. You can't. So, um, so unless your wording of your amendment is in order, I'm going to rule it out of order. So, um, if you work on the wording, you've now got the noting provision. They'll they'll put it up so online in a minute. Um, and uh, so one point three in the paper. That's what I'm trying to find. Is where does it say what the bus priority measures are that are going to be done as part of the business Okay, case. that's your question. Where, where, where does, does it, it say it? It doesn't. Well, it doesn't. Well, that's we deliberately haven't said that because we're going through the business case process and yep. we don't want to predetermine the outcome of that. So, the only, so this is part of the issue with the paper, is when I read through it, the only thing I see is reference to the Greater Crushers Partnership doing a business case. No, that's, but that's a separate matter. Well, that's on, it's not clear from here because in the document that we've got on page 100, I think that's what it says. Perhaps so, if I could speak to that. So the business case for the Foundations and Rester Network might come up and say, OK, so lift the frequency to 1 and 10 on the blue line. You know, at the moment it's 1 and 15, one bus every 15 minutes. It might say bring it up to 1 and 10. It might say um, upgrade a few intersections. It might say um, put in some other PT priority measures. We just don't know what that looks like yet. So some of those costs, if you increase the, um, say, the frequency of the buses, that might fall on ECAN. Uh, some of those costs, if you upgrade an intersection, would obviously you know, fall to I us. Get, look, sorry, I get all that, but in simple terms, if you read the business case that we're okay. submitting to Treasury on can, page 100, Can 1. I just 3, interrupt 3. you, please? Richard, can I ask you a different question? When the um, business case is completed uh, for the, um, uh, for the Greater Christchurch Partnership, any decisions that Christchurch City has to make will come back to us. Yes. Correct. Thank you. Um, I've got Sam and then I've got James and then Jimmy. Hey, thanks Richard and Lynette for that. I actually, I really uh, like the work around the resurfacing and things like that. I just wanted to understand uh, really briefly in the next step, so 9.3, we've talked about the delivery of these improvements using uh, the council capital delivery process, um, which will undertake within the next three to five years. Is there any scope for that to come forward? Because I mean, it's sort of ironic, we talk about acceleration, but we're still going to wait another three to five years. Is there any movement after that business case that we can get to, it moving? To be completed within three to five years. So we'd be starting now. Straight away. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Yep. Uh, James? James? No, it was you. Didn't you put your hand up? Oh, Mike. <laughs> okay, I asked the question. Okay. Um, no, Jimmy. <laughs> sorry. It was Mike that had his hand up, and sorry. It looked like yours. <laughs> My turn? My turn? My mistake. Jimmy. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay. The 4.8, uh, point of one. I'm concerned you choose those five proposed suburban area. But exclude the uh, host were in the home B, because you review your paragraph particular in here. Mention you know the after the uh, earthquake sequence 
no? Those increased transport demand, travel use, due to a change in travel pattern. I think probably the hostel and the home are all apply, comply with the, this criteria. So I just don't know what situation there, this area has been missed out. So the, the five areas that we've recommended um, are the areas which came up through the evidence as being the most of need of interventions. And we, and we looked at three core um, issues, and, and those are around access, safety, and the asset condition. And when we reviewed Christchurch as a whole, those were the areas that popped up through the evidence as being in most of need for intervention. However, that doesn't mean that there wouldn't be use of some of the public transport or the safety money for areas in and around Hallsville. So, but, but again, that will be our recommendation to you as that's based on the evidence of the work that we do further on. So it is all evidence-based and if you read the report cards and you look at the asset conditions for some of the areas and you know, the accessibility and the safety, they don't score particularly well. And, and that's the reason why we're looking to prioritise these areas. So it's, it's all evidence-based, and um, yeah. that's the purpose of the business case. And that will help, to help us get this through Treasury and potentially attract funding. Just to uh, add to Richard's comments, um, and, and it answers your uh, question, Shimmy. This, this is uh, $40 million uh, plus an NZT, NZTA subsidy that we're proposing uh, that is on top of the Council's um, annual spend of yeah. oh, about, 120 million. about 120 million dollars uh, as well and uh, remember this has taken some time and Richard and Lynette have uh, worked very closely with NZTA and Treasury because um, some of the restrictions that um, they have been mm. um, uh, conscious of uh, is that this isn't um, going towards standard um, BAU. BAU funding. So yeah. that's why the criteria are explicitly uh, as they are. And we've got $120 million of BAU spending that we also need to prioritise across the city. But um, this is a slightly different prioritisation criteria to ensure that we get the money um, uh, through the business case. And uh, that's, that's the decision that we're seeking from you today. Um, undoubtedly through the annual plan uh, processes, the allocation of the $120 million um, is a different matter, but uh, um, the way that we've approached this and the work with NZTA and Treasury, uh, they are lined up on, on the release of $40 million using these criteria and on the basis of this business case. Um, and my strongest advice to you is if we um, change it around too much, then we um, risk delaying the access to the $40 million. Can, it, well, so it's a question off that. If we were to amend um, uh, any of the um, investment case uh, provisions here, then that could put at risk the acceptance of the whole investment case, or it could delay it. Well, it's a governance decision, obviously, um, but we would yes. want to go back and re-engage. I'd re -engage want to know, with, though, before voting on an yes, issue we, like that, I'd would, want to know, could it delay it? And could, or could it even under, derail the whole, using that word deliberately, derail the whole process? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I've got um, Sarah, Tim and Aaron. No, it's Brenda's covered. Question. Thank you. So I'm just a wee bit confused reading um, 3A. So is the priority for this $40 million to repair the damaged roads, or will it be to enhance mode choice? So within those five geographic locations, it'll, it'll seek to do a number of things, and including the two that you've just referenced. So what would be the, so I, I'm just, my understanding for the, the, the grant, or the, the amount of money in the accelerated fund was to first of all, repair the, the roads and footpaths that the, our communities have been concerned about and then move on from that. But so, uh, so what's what's the priority? So it's a really simple yeah, so, question. Um, uh, I think I answered that question uh, about as far as I'd um, mm. go with uh, the previous answer. That uh, we're walking a fine line here mm. between um, standard uh, council 
transport spending uh, and um, funding from the Crown uh, related to um, addressing earthquake legacy issues and uh, accelerating momentum fund. And so um, the team have worked uh, very hard with the, intentionally the uh, phrasing and the pitching of this business case. And, and when it comes to the issue of second coat seals and resurfacing, you'd also want to consider this alongside the council's $120 million per year. Mm. Okay. Um, I've got Aaron, then James. Yeah, mine is see my follow-on from Tim's, but it is the um, because it was my understanding, and, and I think most of the public would have thought uh, similarly, um, oddly. But um, the council is seeking 40 million of funding. This is 2.1 uh, through its investment case for the approval for funding accelerated delivery of roading and transport improvements, considered critical for the ongoing recovery and regeneration of Christchurch. So. The people of Christchurch understand we've got a whole lot of broken roads from the earthquakes that they're going to take up to 30 years to fix. This was going to be fixing some of that. So the question that's a follow-on from Tim's would be, of that 40 million, how much would actually be spent, either in dollars or percentage, i take either, on road surfaces and footpaths, ones that we know were broken from the earthquakes? So. I think the key thing with this is it's a reasonably high level program business case and the, and the key thing is to get the funding and then we'd go into concept design, uh, we'd come and speak to the relevant council committee and community boards, uh, go out and do the consultation and come back to you. So what we've done is work to show that you know within these areas there's a range of interventions that we recommend such as footpath improvements, slow speed treatments. And by doing things like that, you also encourage, you know, it's, a, it's an improvement for pedestrians, it's an improvement for cyclists when you improve the quality of the road. So we're not looking at putting in separated cycleways in these areas necessarily, but, but by improving the quality of the road network, you improve the quality for, for all the other users as well. And it's just using modern levels of service that we put in now, because some of those roads, you know, we wouldn't build them quite back what they were, um, what they currently are. You know, we, we'd do them to the modern design standards, et cetera, et cetera. So by virtue of doing that, you also improve the usability for those other users. So that's what it's about. But I'd, I'd be hesitant to get into a discussion or a debate around, um, or give you a number around how much will go into resurfacing, because I, I suspect that will probably change, um, because this is reasonably high level. We haven't done concept designs. We need to do consultation, and we need to go through the community boards. So, um, but the key thing from our perspective is to get the money to enable us to do the further work, and we will certainly keep relevant council committees and community boards informed of next steps. But so, follow on to that is um, there's kilometres of broken roads. This council, uh, when we did our last in, in survey with the public, the thing we're most unpopular on is the condition of our roads. Um, that's what people expect to be accelerated and being fixed. And I understand that modal shift and stuff like that, and people will accept that in their neighbourhood as long as their road is not a dirt track. Yeah, but it also includes footpaths, which the skirt program should be driving on footpaths. Yes, I know, but it's not just about um, it's not just about the it's about the corridor, which includes the footpaths. And I've had more complaints about footpaths than I have about roads. So you know, it's the you know, so it's got to be a mixture. But I, I don't want to uh, intervene. We're talking about the high level strategic case, and I'd like councillors to lift themselves up here. <laughs> and look at the strategic value of getting this funding from central government, getting it in the bank and getting on with the job. The detailed designs will come back and we'll be able to debate those issues in a more appropriate forum at the community board level. So, um, James. Kia ora, Richard. Um, look, I'm staying, I am staying high level on this, but I, I'm asked, the question is on 4.8.1 about the uh, five proposed suburban areas, Richmond, New Brighton, Linwood, Boston and so on, um, will they be, will they be um, I suppose, um, improved in that order or will they be done no. concurrently? No, so there's no order or anything like that in there and um, 
I think the next stage, as I said, is just to go away and do some concept designs and we'll come back to the community boards and, and chat with you about progress, but there's no priority within that, that listing. Right, okay, thanks. Okay, so um, we've got the um, questions. I've just got an amendment that we're looking at, but I guess my other question is, is that uh, the, the actual um, proposals will come back to council or the community board as yes yeah yes. so yeah all right so um so okay so so we've now got the suite of papers so i'm going to deal with them individually and then that will give you time to write up yanni's um amendment and i'll call for a second of then so um we'll go to item number eight and it is just simply a covering uh paper so uh this is just simply